Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tastytutes.com. In this tutorial I will be showing you how to create this monotone graphic photo montage in Adobe Photoshop. I will be demonstrating each step clearly and the techniques used to achieve the visual effects. To follow along with this tutorial, please go ahead and download the free PDF worksheet. The link is in the description. This has all the information you need to follow along with this tutorial, such as the layer effects and breakdown, all the links to find the images featured in this tutorial, and the link to download the work document. To create this composition, I originally started with a few separate images, an image of a weathered piece of paper, a picture of a woman's face, and a whole bunch of separate stains and splat textures. Now, for this tutorial, I purchased these images, so unfortunately I cannot provide them for free this time, but I highly recommend a stock website called photojune.net. Compared to a lot of other mainstream royalty-free websites, this one is really good value, and you can get all the images featured in this tutorial and more off this website. I have provided all links in the description and the work PDF. So then let's get back to our composition. So what do we have here? I'm just going to go quickly through the layers panel so you can see what we got. So I'm just going to drop down my layers panel and we have uh, a really simple layout this time. We have a bunch of layer folders and each one is labeled stains, splats, speckles and face. And you can see that these are all neatly grouped within their own layer folders here. And I'm just going to toggle them. And we have the face. Really simple this time. So I'm just going to quickly go through with you the steps I took to create this composition. So I'm going to start by creating a new document. I'm going to press Command N on the keyboard, the shortcut, and I'm just going to come down to my presets. I'm going to choose international paper. I'm just going to go for an A3 size. That'll that'll do nicely. And I'm going to change the resolution to 150. OK. Then I'm going to come over to my face JPEG. I'm just going to press Command A to select all. And I'm just going to press Command C to copy. And I'm going to come back into my new document and press Command V to paste. And here we have our picture. Now I'm going to resize this one slightly. So I'm going to press Command T. That's going to bring up my free transform. And I'm going to press Shift and Alt on the keyboard. By pressing Shift and Alt, that's going to enable me to scale the image up nicely. So I'm just going to scale this image up a little bit and then just press Enter. And next, I'm going to come to Image Mode and change this to Grayscale. I'm not going to flatten that just yet. Now, the next thing I want to do is I really want to boost the contrast of the, of the image here. So I'm going to press Command L to bring up my levels, and I'm just going to tweak my holders here and just find a value I am happy with. So I'm just going to tweak these, and we're just looking to get a nice bit of contrast. So we've got a nice black and white image. So let's tweak this a little bit. And I want what I want is to keep maintain some detail of on the features but really push out that hair. So we make that really dark and make the face quite white as well, but just maintain some of the key details, such as the eyes, a bit of the mouth and the nose there. We don't want too much. We click OK, that'll do just nicely. Now, next comes the tricky part, because what we're going to do is we're going to start to delete some of the, delete some of the picture in preparation for later on. So I'm going to come over to my eraser tool in the menu and I'm going to come up and drop down and select a textured brush. So let's let's select a textured brush and let's push the brush size up a little. And now we're just going to start to get rid of some of this picture here. So I'm just going to start deleting away and because the the effect I'm going to be going for is like a like a wine spill, so I'm going to be adding more details to the hair. So it doesn't matter right now that I'm 
deleting too much of the hair. But I can just toggle the size of the brush on my keyboard there. And I can just do that. Just work away at the image quite quickly. And before long, you'll have something that looks a little bit like this. Maybe we could just delete a little bit more of the hair there. And now I'm ready to start to draw on top. So first I want to come over to my layers panel. I'm just going to double click on this layer and call this face. And then let's come back to my layers. I can press uh, my comp, press V to pull up the move tool so I can move this around. And I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller and press command T and press shift alt on my keyboard to scale this down ever so slightly. I'm just going to bring it slightly to the right here. Let's press enter. Right then. So I'm going to create a new layer by pressing command shift n and I'm going to call this blob 1 and hit OK. I'm going to come over to my menu and grab the brush tool. I'm going to come up and change my brush size to around about 70 and I want to select a solid brush, no feather edge, just a solid brush. And we're going to come over to the comp. I'm just going to just start to draw just start to draw a bit of a blob, a bit of a bit of a shape coming off the hair here. So try and be a bit of fun with this. Just draw it off. See what we can do. Draw a bit of a, a blobby shape. Maybe this one can come out a little bit. Okay, let's let's try that. Now, at first glance, that looks like looks a bit rough, but I want to show you a little trick just to add a little bit of blobbiness to this or a bit more randomness to this uh, object we've just drawn. So if we come to filter and we come down to other and we select maximum. What we can do, we can change the value of the radius and you can see what happens when we do this. It, it sort of changes the shape slightly and it doesn't look so, doesn't look so artificial. So let's go for something around 15. And that's looking quite interesting. Click OK. Now the fun with this is we can draw back on top of this. So I'm just going to add a bit more to this. By drawing again on it, just added a bit more, just adding a little bit more to it. And what you'll find that when we come up again and we add the filter maximum again, creates another interesting effect. So we're going to leave that as it is right now. And we're going to press Command Shift N. We're going to call, call this Blob Two. And I'm just going to start to draw a bit more. Undo that. It's a bit wild. So I'm just going to draw a bit more here. Just start to add a little bit more here. On a separate layer, let's just add a bit more. Let's add some more here. I'm going to come up to filter. We've got our maximum tool here. I'm going to hit that again and see how it looks. That's looking quite interesting. I'm just going to draw on top of that a bit more. Add a bit more. Okay, so I'm going to create a new layer. Command Shift N. Okay, but this time I'm going to come on this side. I'm just going to draw some random shape here. Filter, maximum. Quite interesting. And then Command Shift N. Let's call this Blob Three, and we can. Draw another shape, maybe. Let's see how that looks. Filter, maximum. And after a little while of building your layers and experimenting with the maximum tool, you'll have something that looks a little bit like this. And then if we look at our layers panel, you'll end up with a bunch of layers, that your blob layers, so I'm going to neatly organize these. I'm going to click on the top blob layer, and by holding shift, I can
can select on the bottom blob layer and press Command G and that's just going to group that so I'm going to double click on this and call it blobs so you can see now that we have what we had before and now we have our blobs on top now quickly the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on the face layer because what I want to do is I want to get rid of all the little highlights that we see on the hair we just want to black that out so I'm going to come to my pen tool and just draw quickly cover in these highlights so we get ourselves a really a nice bold image so I'm just quickly going to do this and now we've got to the point where we can start to introduce some of the textured elements we've acquired earlier on so I'm just going to zoom out a little bit get a better look at what we're doing and I'm going to come over to my stains source here so I've got a whole bunch of images I can choose from. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to select some of these blotchy stains here. So let's use my lasso tool to select some of these blotches here. And I'm going to press Command C to copy and come back into my comp and press Command V. And there you have it. Let's zoom in slightly. I'm going to press V to pull up my move tool so I can move this around a little bit and with it let's start let's start down here now as you can see the this is behind the blobs here so I'm, let's come to my layers panel and just drag this on top now you can see that we've got a lot of white in the background this is easily rectified by coming up and changing the blending mode to multiply there you go so now we can merge this into the image. By the way, uh, what I didn't mention earlier on is by pasting, you know, by pasting the texture, if you remember, we originally had it and it was color. Because our image is grayscale, this will, anything we paste into this composition will become grayscale. Now, this is very important because this is going to help us later to create the monotone image. Okay, so I'm going to place my texture somewhere suitable and all I can do is if I want to duplicate this texture a whole bunch of times I can press alt on the keyboard and just click and drag and I can duplicate that texture real easy by pressing command T I can change the scale of this and rotate this and just reposition it somewhere else on the composition let's come back to my stains here and press we currently have a selection. We press Command D to deselect. Come back to my lasso tool, and I'm going to choose some more splats here. Click that. Command Copy. Command C. Back to my composition, and Command V to paste that. And let's bring it over here. Command T. I'll rotate this a little bit, and maybe change the scale. Enter and come to my layer blending mode and hit multiply it's looking kinda of cool there and back into my stains choose some more speckles here command C and command V paste that in command T Let's push up the scale and layer blending mode multiply so I think you get the the idea. What we're going to do, we're just going to do this a few more times, put some more splats in here. And then shortly you should end up with something that looks a little bit like this. Try not to get too many in because we're going to be adding a lot more. So we don't want to go too overboard with it. So again, in my layers panel, we have a lot of individual layers here. So I'm just going to select them all and I'm going to group the folder as done before and I'm going to rename this folder uh, speckles right so next we're going to add some of the bigger splat textures so I've got a selection here I'm going to press command D to deselect and I'm going to press L to pull up my lasso tool I'm going to start with this big one here I'm just going to draw around this and command C to copy Come back into my comp and press Command V to paste. 
I'm just going to move this one up a bit. I want to change the scale, so I'm going to press Command T, toggle free transform, and by pressing Shift on the keyboard, I'll be able to scale this one up and get that one a bit bigger there. And press Enter, and again, we're going to come up to the layer blending mode and hit Multiply, and press V to grab my Move tool, and I can move this around and. Maybe I'm going to rotate it, Command T, free transform again, I'm just going to rotate that. And let's move that, let's make it look like it's coming off the side of the head there. Looks kind of cool. And maybe I'll press, pressing Alt on the keyboard, I'm going to click and drag, I'm going to duplicate this one, and just bring it down a little bit. Maybe I'll make this one a little bit smaller, Command T, just bring that a little bit smaller, rotate, just to break up break up those that clean break up that clean edge there so it doesn't look so so straight there you go it's looking kind of cool um, let's come back into our stains command D to deselect L to grab my lasso tool let's grab this one up here command C to copy command V to paste and let's Come over to our layer blending mode, multiply. Let's command T, if we transform that, move that around. It's looking kind of cool, and we're going to grab this big one down here. Command C, command V, if we transform that, make it nice and big. Multiply. Let's bring it down here. Just to add to the effect. So before I move on, I'm just going to come straight over to my layers panel and select all of those new new layers we've just added, and I'm going to group them. Command G, double click on the group name, and I'm going to call this group Splats. Okay. So finally, we're going to add the last texture effects. We're going to start to add the the uh, ring stains here, just to finish it off. But um, this is looking pretty big at the moment. I just want to make it a little bit smaller. I want to create some more space so I can add the rings. So I'm going to come over to my layers panel. I'm just going to select the top group, and by holding shift, I'm going to select on the bottom layer, and that will select everything in my comp. I press Command T to free transform. I'm just going to come to the top here and press Shift and Alt on the keyboard and just click and drag and that will just be able to just shrink this down a little bit just a little bit so I can create a bit more space and press Enter. With all the layers selected I can just move this up a little let's move it, into, let's move it up and I can come back to my stains reference images and I can start to make selections so Command D to deselect L, let's grab my lasso tool, we're going to start with this ring here. So I'm going to copy that, Command C, and as you can see in the layers panel, we've got all the layers selected, so I'm just going to click on the top, so when I paste this in, Command V, I'll, I'll be sure to paste it on the, on the top there. So press V to bring up my selection tool, so I can move this around, and I press Command T, and by holding Shift, I can scale this up, Scale that up quite nice, how I, just how I want it. Maybe I want to rotate that around a little and press enter. Move that into place. And again, I'm going to hit multiply on the layer blending mode. But this time, pasting it in, it was quite a faint color. As you can see, they're all quite faint. So in my comp, I want to increase the, the depth, the darkness of this. Easily done. Command L, I can bring up my levels. And if I just tweak the far left node, just pull it in a little bit, we can see that we can boost the, the darkness of this how we want it. Okay. And again, we're going to do that with a couple more of these. And before long, after following the, the process of copying and pasting them in and maybe changing the levels, uh, we'll have something that looks a little bit like this. And again, we'll have all the la layers in the layers panel, so we're going to neaten this up by grouping them all, and I'm going to call this group stains. Now, that completes the preparation of our face composition. 
Once you're happy with all the textures, it's now time to introduce some colour and place the face onto the paper. At this stage, I would suggest saving this and keeping this separate, as you never know, in future, you may wish to make some changes. So I'm just going to save this. I'm going to press Command uh, Shift S to save as. I'm just going to call this Cheat Black and White. So I'm going to save that as black and white. And then next, I'm going to introduce some colour. Up until now, we have been working in grayscale, and for good reason. We dragged in all our textures, and they were all converted into grayscale for us. Now, because of that, it's going to be really easy to create the monotone colour. All we have to do is come up to Image, Mode, and select Duotone. And if I just drag this over, when you select Duotone, you will come you will pull up a properties window here and it's going to ask us what color so at the moment we've got this dark uh, muddy brown so I'm going to click on the color picker and I'm going to come up and I'm going to select something quite dark like a dark whiny kind of color something like that and click OK and as you can see we've turned it from black and white into a monotone dark wine color and I'm happy with that so now I'm going to create a new document command N and I'm going to make it exactly the same size so click on international paper grab the A3 and I'm going to change it to 150 to match the resolution okay and then I'm going to come over and I'm going to grab my paper texture example here so I'm going to press command A to select all command C to copy and I'm going to come over to my new document here. Let's move the layers panel out of the way. And Command V to paste it in. And I might just want to shrink. Well, I'll leave it. I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that size for now. Okay. And I might just want to tweak the colors a little bit. So if I press Command U and pull up my hue saturation toolbar, I'm just going to pull toggle the saturation just to make it a little bit bit more grayscale. If I pull it all down you can see I make it completely grey but I don't want to do that. I just want to make it subtly just desaturate that just a little bit. Okay. And I'm just going to rename this layer. Rename the layer by double click on it. So we'll call that paper. And then I'm going to come back into my composition here. And now I'm going to drag this into my new document here. Before I do that, I'm just going to do a little bit of preparation. So I'm going to come over to my layers panel and just select the top group by pressing shift and holding. I'm going to grab the bottom layer, press command G, and I'm going to rename this face. And that's going to enable me to move everything at once. And there's one last little detail we have to address before we drag it into our new document. I'm just going to drop down the layers here. And I'm going to, be, I'm going to focus on the, the face and the blobs here. As you can see, the blobs are separate from the face. And at the moment, that doesn't look like a problem. But that will become a problem soon. As you are aware, if you have been following along with this tutorial, we have been changing the layer blending modes of all the textures to multiply. We have yet to do this with the face and the blobs, but if we do it as it currently is, it will look a bit of a mess and there will be a horrible overlap. So we are simply going to merge these two layers together, but when we do merge them, there will be no going back. So what I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to select these two items and I'm going to press Command G to group them. I'm just going to call this Backup because this will be our backup because I'm going to duplicate this group now. Duplicate the group. OK. And I'm going to press Command E. And that's going to merge that group. Now I'm going to toggle the visibility of our backup. So we've still got the face and the blobs separate. But now we've got a new layer which is combined and the fact that this the visibility is off means that it's not going to be a factor in our composition anymore. It's just there if we want to come back later and make some changes. We're just creating ourselves the flexibility so we don't get annoyed later if we decide to change some things. Okay, so we're ready to drag this into our new dock. So I'm going to just close up the 
layer folder there. And I'm just going to click anywhere and just drag, drag into the tab and drag into our new document and let go. And then soon that's just going to drop everything on top. And you can see what's happened. Because all the textures have multiply applied to their layer blending mode, you can see that they've fused with the background quite easy. But you can see here on the on the face, we've still got a bit of white area. So if I dig into my layers here, we can click on the backup, copy. And if I change my layer blending mode to multiply, you can see that that has behaved just like all the others and fused nicely. And now it's all in. We can start to move things around a little bit. I come over to my layers panel, I can click on the main face folder. I can just move this around, move it around the comp. Now, the first thing we see is that we've got a bit of overlap. All the textures and stains that we've introduced, you can see that they're coming off the page. That's not really what we want. We want everything to stay neatly within the page here. That's easily done. What we're going to do is we're going to select, select on our paper layer. I'm going to press W to grab the magic wand. And I'm just going to select in the white area around it. Um, we've got a nice selection there. You can see that we could get some additional selections at the bottom. I'm going to press Shift. And you can see on the mouse cursor we get a little plus sign. I'm going to click. We can just select all the white area there. And then I'm going to press Command Shift I. And that's going to invert the selection. So now we've got the page area selected as opposed to the outside of the page. And then I'm going to click on the face layer the layer with all the effects inside and I'm going to come down to the bottom of my layers panel here and the third icon from the left third icon from the left we have a layer add layer mask I'm just going to click that once and that has indeed masked everything within that folder now if we pay close attention to the layers panel we can see there is a chain icon here if we click on that once, that will remove it. Now this will give us the flexibility to move the contents of the folder around within the mask. For example, as you can see, we currently have our mask selected, the mask icon selected. If I click on the folder and then start to move the contents around, you can see that we have some great flexibility. Very helpful. So now we're almost finished with this composition, but there's just a few little things I want to do just to polish it off. First of all, I'm just going to move the textures into a position I'm happy with. And at this point, I might want to add a few more just for the effect. For example, I'm liking this splash here. I wouldn't mind having one of those up in the top corner, just creeping in. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to follow my layers down here. And I think it's this layer here in the stains folder, I'm going to click that by holding Alt on the keyboard. I'm just going to click and drag that up into the top corner. That's looking a bit dark, so I'm just going to come over to my layers panel and change the opacity. Let's toggle the opacity there. We want that to be quite a subtle stain coming in there. I'm just going to click and move that around with my arrow keys. I might just want to bring and bring another one of these in. Let's click that. Alt and drag. Maybe I want to change the scale a little bit. Command T, pull that up. And maybe change the opacity to something like something quite light. Maybe move these around a little. Completely up to me. It's maybe a few more of these little speckles. I'm just going to leave it at that. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, come over to my layers panel and just drop this down, make it all neat. Now I'm looking at the, the face layer here of the, of the woman and I'm thinking that the colour doesn't quite match the stains. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to come down and select the backup copy which is our face layer here and then press Command U I'm going to just toggle the hue and saturation. So I'm just going to pull the saturation down because I want to make the color a little bit darker. Then I'm going to tweak the saturation a little 
is to find something that's a little bit like a darker wine color that's looking quite good to me and I'll go with that so if I press undo we can see before after before after I think you may agree that this is this is a bit better now if we zoom out a little bit and get a good look at the the entire composition if I zoom in we can see that the detail on the eyes it's quite it's quite strong what I want to do is I want to blend in these these details to make it look as if it's kind of bleaching or leaching into the paper or bleeding into the paper like ink does on on paper when it's spilt on so I'm going to create a little effect so I'm going to come to my layers panel I'm going to duplicate this layer so I'm going to right click and duplicate the layer click OK and that's just made it really dark so I'm just going to toggle the visibility of the one underneath and I'm just going to come up to filter and I'm going to come down to artistic and then we're going to scroll down to underpainting and let's have a look in the preview window what we have here. If we take a look at the properties to the far right, we're going to just tweak these. So we've got underpainting. We're going to push the brush size to zero. We're going to take the texture coverage to zero. And we want the texture to be on a canvas because that'll best represent the paper underneath. And we're going to change the scaling. Let's push the scaling right up and let's bring the relief up to about six and if we zoom in we can see what the effect we're going to have here you can see that that looks a little bit like bleached ink so let's go with that let's click OK and there it is let's zoom out a little bit and you can see that that looks a little bit more ingrained with the paper but if we want to have just a little bit of detail so it's not all sort of lost can bring back this layer and I'm going to change the opacity of them both now this is down to your discretion but I'm going to change the top textured layer to around 80 if I come up and change this to 80 and I'm going to change the layer underneath to around 40 so let's zoom off this and take a look and that's looking just fine Lastly, I might just want to name these layers so I can differentiate them. For example, I can uh, rename the top one to Face uh, and uh, Painting, so I can remember that one has the effect applied. I can just call this one Face. And let's just close our layers there, our layer folder. And there we have it. That is our complete monotone graphic photo montage. So the main trick really was creating the initial design in grayscale, which made it really easy to turn into the monotone color. Also, by using the multiply layer blending mode, it was really easy to merge and overlap all the textures together to create an interesting outcome. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you did, go ahead and subscribe to the channel as there will be lots more videos like this coming soon. And if you're interested, hop over to my website at tastytubes.com. You can see more videos just like this. And from there, you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook, where I'll be talking about various creative topics and keeping you up to date with new video releases. So have fun, guys, and I will see you next time.